Now, demons are giant-like in nature. They were giants on the earth in those days. Also, afterward, the sons of God came to the daughter of men and they brought children to them. Those were mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Now, see what they started doing, five. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth. So that means they began to stir man to be wicked. That's another thing they started doing. That every intent and thought of his heart was only evil continually. So they also penetrated the thoughts, the imagination of men. So when you just see man standing and begin to think I will kill his fellow man, this spirit penetrates not only women's womb, but they penetrate men's mind and imagination. When you ask how did they produce sex toy, you can see this was sexual urge they came with first. How the uh, sex toy came. This demon penetrates intent thoughts of man's heart. Somebody was sitting in his own house and he said, how will I make sure I instinct men from the world? How will I frustrate marriages? Imagine if there's no marriage, how would a man like Moses be born? Jesus himself, Joshua, Jeremiah, every great person, even you, if there was no marriage, if it was all about sex toy, how would you be created? So these giants are dwelling first in what? Marriages. In what? Marriage. Okay, I will not continue with marriage. Today is not marriage day. But I want to still show you that these giants, they still exist. And I want every man today, every one of us, we are confronting all the giants in our families. <laughs> Another area again, we'll see the giants when we, after they finish possessing marriages, mounting their guard in marriage. Another areas of our life where they mount their guard is in territories. If I want to go further, I can tell you a lot of things. Okay, so let me just take you to some of the places where they possess before we go into territory. Because if I talk about territories, you think I'm talking about country to country, government to government, so that you will take it serious when we are, we are talking about territory. One of the areas Jesus talked about these spirits that they possess is people's goods. Luke 11 from verse 21. Jesus called this spirit strong man. It is this giant he's talking about. He said, when a strong man, fully armed, guide his own palace his goose are in peace but this strong man has arms is fully equipped and is guiding his palace his goose are in peace who gave that strong man goose when god created you the bible said god saw that everything he created was very good meaning your destiny your good health your good life everything about you is what this strong man called goose so this strong man, this giant, they possess people's goods. You see somebody living life suffering as if there's no God in their life. It was not the will of God for them. Poverty, you are seeing hard life, failure, disappointment. Anything good that should come to a man, these spirits are interested in it. So when they come to a man's life, they come armed to seize goose, family goose, national goose. When a strong man fully armed, guide his own goose. He said, but when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcome him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divide his spoils. Spoils means those goose. Many family need to go on a battle with the strong man. And when I'm talking about dealing with strong man, you don't deal with strong man by inviting people into your family house to say, we need to do a revival in our family house. We need to do cleansing. We need to sacrifice to the ancestors. Too small. When it's dealing with giants, when giant is covering your family's goose, you say you want to go and pay one man of God 400,000, 500,000 at home, or they'll pay them to come to your family and do a revival fire must be. They, they finish three days. They are, you are provoking them. Or you just woke up one midnight and say, I'm tired of I'm tired of suffering. Any witches fight. No, 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 no. I want to teach you how to address giants. Because these giants, they are the ones that when they evaporated from this planet Earth, they became spirits that dwell in the heavenlies. Spirits that dwell on Earth. Spirits that also went. Some of them were the ones you call mermaid. Giant man. When the giant died, when their physical body was drowned in the days of Noah, some of them stay in the heavens, some of them stay in the air, some of them stay in the land, some went under the water. So when Paul was talking about Ephesians 6 10, he said, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then he said, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. He said, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Then he started telling us, all where these giants are. He said, but against 
principalities. You see that? These are giants. Against powers, these are the giants. Against rulers of darkness of this age, these are the giants. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places, these are the giants. To fight giants, you must learn about giants. Let me shock you to say David killed a giant. David killed Goliath. Isn't it a giant? But it will shock you that David did not just go and fight the giant that day. He learned the testimony on how God killed giants. In Psalm 135 from verse 10, see what David said. This was before he was born, but he knew these things were documented. He said, he defeated many nations and slew mighty kings. Sion, Sion was a giant. When the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt, the land God told them to go and possess. The kings that were leaders of those lands, they were giants. He says, Sion, king of the Amorites, he was a giant. Og, king of Bashan, was also a giant. And all the kingdom of Canaan. In the book of Deuteronomy 2 from verse 11, look at that. He said, they were also regarded as giants like the Anakim, but the Moabites called them Emim. He said, the Elrite formerly dwell in Sai, but the descendants of that, these are giants he's talking about. They take, they mount themselves in territories. But the descendants of Esau dispossess them and destroy them before them and dwell in their place, just as Israel did to the land of their possession, which the Lord gave to them. Deuteronomy 3 from verse 11. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of giants. Indeed, his bedstead was as iron bedstead. Is it not in Reba of the people of Ammon? Nine cubits in his length and four cubits in his width, according to the standard of cubits. So these giants, they had to fight him. Everyone, even Esau, Esau generation fought giants. When the children of Israel were traveling, there were three nations God said they shouldn't fight. Esau, then the um, Lot's descendants, which is Ammon and Moab. And according to scripture, the Moabites also fought giants to dispossess them. The Ammonites also fought giants to dispossess them. Esau, they also fought giants to dispossess them. So we can see that these giants are possession-minded. They don't only possess humans. They possess goose. They possess people's destiny. They possess nations. They possess territories. Because if you read the book of Daniel, you discover that when they say, when Paul was talking about principalities, principalities are prince. Giant, this demon giant that are prince that are guiding over territories, nations. Daniel 10 from verse 1. Now you might not fight like David to carry sling and stone one giant. This time, there are ways to fight giants. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel whose name was called Belshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and had understanding of vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all. The three whole weeks were fulfilled. When it is this spirit you are dealing with, it takes a consistent long time of prayer. It's not something you just wake up one, three o'clock in the midnight and shout, fire, and go and sleep the next night. <laughs> you don't understand. When you are dealing with principalities, powers, those season you are called into that battle, you have to put your flesh in discipline. Your flesh will suffer. All those pleasure you normally have, you have been given to the flesh, you must put them under subjection. Do you see that he said, I ate no pleasant food. All the things that I was addicted to, I stopped it. You will have to discipline yourself concerning your phone, concerning social media, concerning talking. That is, I ate no pleasant food. No meat or wine came into my mouth. Nor did I anoint myself at all. Till three all week we are fulfilled. You want to go into this battle because I believe me, whether you want to go, you don't want to go. These spirits are in every family. They are in everybody's destiny. They are mounting their guard. They are, so Jesus called them strong man. These are now witches. So in the realm of the spirit, this beast talking about, they exist as a dragon, fairy dragon. These giants, prince, principalities. Witchcraft is like a bed compared to principality. You know, when you say a bed and a dragon. So all this which you have been dealing with that they should die, they are bed. The ones that are mounting guard over territories, over families, over nations, they are dragons. And when you read the book of Daniel, I think we read it last week, when we say those beasts you saw became a human. God gave them the art of a human. We were reading it last week in the book of Daniel. So one thing you must understand when you need to deal with a giant, 
is that you put your body under subjection. That's number one. Then number two, you put yourself in a long prayer. Not long prayer to pray from 12 in the midnight to 6 in the midnight. No. The longevity of the prayer is now consistency. I fasted for three full weeks. That's what the prophet Daniel is saying. Except you don't want to grow spiritually. You want to be looking for, you want to be jumping from one man of God to another. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. This pray for me, pray for me cannot deal with this. Even for any church to grow, there are principalities. Even for any business to grow, they are principalities. Daniel 10, 12. He said, then he said to me, do not fear Daniel. That's an angel came when he was praying that long prayer. Do not fear Daniel for the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God. Your words were hard and have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Some of you think your prayer has not been answered. You have been withstood. Your angels have been withstood. Answers to prayer is revelation. What this angel was bringing was revelation. Because what you need to move from where you are to another place is idea, revelation, and information. So what they withstood the angels from delivering. Because this kind of battle we are talking about here. If an angel appeared to you now and tell you, pray this kind of prayer for seven days. Do you remember David said, it is the Lord that t-shirt my finger to fight. He trained man for war and he t-shirt my finger to fight. So sometimes this spirit we are fighting, they are not that powerful. We need a revelation, idea, vision, or a knowledge from God. God can just say, don't do this for seven days. Pray like this. Read this. Read this. Consistently for seven days and you will get your free. That's how easy it is. So what they did, they withstood that revelation Daniel needed. L let me tell you something. A man of God went to a city to go and preach. God sent him there. He was preaching to everybody. Nobody was listening to him. He was preaching back and forth. Preaching. No single soul listening to him. Because a force from the river in that territory was controlling everybody's mind. Then he went back to God and said, did you really send me here? Why am I preaching and nobody have ever given their life to Jesus? I came here for many months. God said, you would have asked me. Now go and pray, Susan, and prayer for this amount of day. For seven days, pray like this. Then the seven day, go to that river, anoint it. Then the man did that prayer for seven days and go to that river on the seventh day and poured the anointing oil. And the beast came out. A lady said, what are you doing? Leave these people for me. They are my people. They started fighting and exchanging quotes. And the demon started negotiating and said, okay, from this side, take them. From this side, leave them for me. The man said, no, everybody must be saved. And after that battle, the demon left with anger. And the man went the next morning to go and preach. And it looked as if it was, I don't know how to call it. It looked as if people were hungry for long and they just saw food. They gathered him. Under one, the souls gathered him. These were men, mighty men of old, renowned men, sons of God. That is their name, these giants. That's what the Bible called them. So God, the reason why God pours out his spirit upon all flesh so that you will be called the son of God is when that spirit is in you before you can confront this spirit I'm talking about. You can't confront it in therapy. When they are ruling a city, a nation, a territory and you saw, they see everybody getting depressed. Even the therapist is also depressed. You don't know. When they finish listening to you, they go and smoke and start crying. Believe me, ask every therapist, police, therapists, they are the most depressed people and pastors. Those people that want to help humanity are the most depressed people. <laughs> you don't know. Police, therapists, pastors, teachers are the most depressed people because these spirits that are controlling territory fight them more. If you check very well, I say pastors are the most depressed people. After them, police. After police. Teachers. After teachers. Therapists. These people are the ones that commit suicide more that you don't know. Because if a nation... Let's go to Daniel 10 again from verse 13. Look at the story. Continue there. He said, For the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. For I had been left alone there with the king's of Persia. From prince to king, they are kings of Persia, they are prince of Persia. 14. He said, now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days. For the vision refers to many days yet to come. When he has spoken such word to me, I turned my face towards the ground and became speechless. Now, the rest is another teaching for another day. But this is, Daniel was experiencing sleeping paralysis when this angel was talking to him. 
was his, his flesh was weak. That's that sleeping paralysis that people normally feel when this spirit negatively also attack. If you read Daniel, uh, Daniel they say his face was towards the ground. He wanted to rise, but he can't. Because these beings, if they come to where mortal body is, you begin to melt in their presence. Both the good one and the bad one. From verse 15. He said, when he spoke such word to me, I turned my face towards the ground and became speechless. And suddenly, one having like the likeness of a son of man touched my lips, and I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him, who stood before me, my Lord, because of the vision, my sorrow have overwhelmed me, and I have retained no strength. For how can this servant of my Lord talk with my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor is any breath left in me. This is what happens when people are going through sleeping paralysis. When you are going through sleeping paralysis, where these demons, they come, these giant man, they come, they weaken your body and they darken cancer. If an angel comes, he comes to give you understanding and vision. If a demon is the one that came, he came to block your mind from idea, block your destiny, block your career. So when the person wake up, is it that some people wake up with vision to know what to do or some people wake up with confusion not knowing what to do? Have you ever woke up in the morning from sleep and you feel as if nothing has happened? Them? You just hate your life. You, just, you are just tired. You just confused. They visited. They visited that night. You, are, you woke up and said, why am I even living? What am I living for? You even to go out, you are tired, you are angry, you are just sad. For no reason, nobody has provoked you. It's still fresh morning. You are angry. They came that night. They came to bring confusion. They didn't come to bring vision. They came to bring frustration, not understanding. They came to bring darkness and gloominess, not knowledge. But I'm praying for you today. You shall slay all those giants. <laughs> This life is full of imitation. You see somebody eating rice, rice begin to hungry you. You see somebody did this kind of air, you ask, where did you do this air? You go and do the air. Women, you don't imitate spiritual things. You get the revelation of it. I'm teaching you because you, after a year, you need to go for an exercise. This is how you grow to be a territorial commander, to fulfill destiny. Because I'm telling you, God does not send you to where there's no giants. How come these giants there in Genesis, when they finished killing them, they went to mount themselves in people's territory. They were in uh, Mount Seir, where he saw conquered them, where the Moabites conquered, where God was sending the Israelites to. They were also there, so they are territorially minded. Even Goliath, it was territory that they were fighting about. See 1 Samuel 17 from verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle, and we were gathered at Soko, which belonged to Judah. See territory? They were interested in that Soko that belonged to Judah. So they had come between Soko and Ezekiah in Ephes Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together, and they had come in the valley of Hela, and drew up in battle array against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, with a valley between them. Now you can see that they set camp. When you want to deal with this power, you set a prayer camp. A reviving grace. Some of us are sleeping in the realm of that wire them so much that they can't even understand what I'm saying. If you are not following what I'm saying, it means they have color be you, color be you. You need to be flogged to wake up. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yeah. Ask anyone, a man of God, somebody that is a giant in the realm of the spirit, or somebody that is a giant in whatever thing they are doing, they will tell you this series of consistency I'm talking about. Even these people know that for them to assess height, their flesh will suffer. You, you pray for one minute, say you pray for five days or you pray for one day, then you start complaining, God, no, they answer me. You are not serious. If it is result you are looking for in life, both in good, in bad, in humanity, you have to travel this journey for long and your flesh must suffer. Are you hearing me? See, and the champion went out. There's a champion challenging every man from the camp of the Philistine named Goliath from God, whose height was six cubits and his span. He had a bronze helmet on his head. That is the strong man. Jesus said it is well armed. And he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of his coat was 5,000 shekel of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his leg and a bronze javelin between his shoulder. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, meaning his spear was like this pillar. You see this pillar? That's how Goliath's spear was. And his iron spear head weighed 600 shekel, and a shekel bearer went before him. A sheep bearer, okay. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And you, the servant of Saul, choose a man for yourself and let him come and fight me. The giant in your family is saying they should choose a man. He's not saying you should go and look for a prayer group to come to the family and let them, you, you give them fun, pay them, they shot 
chop, 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 chop. In the night, they wake up and start shouting, fire, fire, fire. Ooh, ah, no. <laughs> when they go, demons will come back with force. There are things you get when they just do you this kind of deliverance. There are things you get, yes. There's a possession you can achieve. There's a blessing that comes to you. But if you really want to gain who you really are and possess all what God really prepared for you, <laughs> you have to travel that journey. Is it, have you asked yourself why a church will start in a nation and they cross the church down? The journey is difficult. Have you asked yourself why some pastors go to a place to pray? Immediately the pastor went there to pray, they kill that pastor. Or some people become Christian in a family and immediately they start the journey, they kill them. Or they stop their business. Or they stop them. Immediately you gave your life to Christ. Look as if they tie everything you had. There's a journey. When Goliath was ranting and crying every morning, tormenting them, he said, if he's able to fight with me, he said, choose a man. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servant. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servant and serve us. Every day he was saying this. Who is your family serving? You think they are serving God? Until a champion arrives and confronts it. We have many Christians that said to as if they have arrived. Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press towards the mark of the eye calling. Your call, God called you, is a eye call and you don't attain that eye call until you press. Are you hearing me? Until what? You press. You press in prayer. You press in fasting. You press in discipline. Longevity of prayers. Oh my God. When I studied the spiritual topography of where I came from, I discovered that my father was carrying the biggest masquerade in my village. I discovered that we were answering the name of the river, the mermaid, our son name before was the name of that river. We were called Wimo, meaning children of Imo. That's what we were. We were studying. You don't study the spiritual topography of where you came from. How will you fight? What will you know you are fighting? Before David went to confront Goliath in Psalm 136 from verse 16, he said, you slew when the, when the children of Israel were passing through. Psalm 136, please go there first. He said to him who led his people through the wilderness, for his mercies endures forever. To him who struck down great kings, for his mercies endures forever. And slew famous king, for his mercies endures forever. Sion, king of the Amorites, he was a giant, for his mercies endures forever. Og, king of Bashan, for his mercies endures forever. And gave their land that the giants were possessing as an heritage, for his mercies endures forever. A heritage to Israeli servants, for his mercies endures forever. You see that? So they are giants that are standing in people's family now. Standing in people's promised land. Your promised land. In every man's promised land, there are giants. That was a quote from Bishop David Edipo. He said, in every man's promised land, there is a giant. You will meet it, that giant. And when you are ready to confront it, even in cities, nations, territory, there are giants. You see Goliath's threat. The Bible said in 1 Samuel 17, from verse 16, he did that for 40 days. I mean this. And the Philistines drew near and presented himself 40 days, morning and evening. He was challenging them. Come out and fight! Morning when you wake up from bed, is this voice you will hear. Anytime you wake up in the morning and hear a voice of depression and confusion, is the giant that is calling you. He say, come out! You, you, you! You are sleeping in here, joking around. You say you are a Christian. Come out and fight! And some of us don't know that this giant has been calling us for many years. You are waking up depressed over and over again every morning. For 20 years now, 10 years, 5 years, the giant has been calling you. In my village where I came from, if a pastor goes to that village to preach, he comes with fire. Those pastors that when you greet them in the morning, they say, Rakubaba, red air. In, <laughs> they don't speak English, they speak tongues. If that pastor stays six months in that place, Imo, that river, we give that person women. They will start sleeping with people's wives. And they will leave their revival and many of them are driving bike, as I'm talking to you. They will be a shadow of who you knew them to be. You are not here. You think we are joking? Like. When you come into a nation, you see big women, big bum bum, and everything. You think is a jubilation. There is a spirit in that territory that is feeding you with the wine of that nation. Whether you are a pastor, whether you are a prophet, whether you are a bishop, whether you are a Christian, you discover that you begin to have spirit of lust. You forget why you are here. You forget why you are a Christian. You forget who you are and begin to become who they are. You, you just enter a nation, you discover everybody is a drunkard, drinking like no man business. And you begin to drink and say, thank God, beer is cheap here. <laughs> <laughs> 
whenever you enter a family, enter a nation, enter a territory, study the spiritual topography of that nation. Because a principality, a principality, have blindfolded everyone in that city. So, Daniel, there is a revelation you need to be exempted. That's why he went for 21 days praying for understanding. Or else, if you don't have understanding, what cover Babylon will cover you? The sin, the limitation that that family have we confront you, we cover you also. You need a spiritual revelation to break out of that pattern, of that covering, that is covering that family, that is covering that territory, that is covering that city, that is covering that nation. The way people are looking at me, I don't know, am I supposed to be teaching pastors this? Or you enter a nation, it's not hard. Once you just talk to a lady, they grief for you. They, uh, uh, women are cheap here. Yeah. <laughs> you will discover that anywhere something is being manufactured, things are cheap there. You left your village, left different places and come to that place and say, hi, Look as if uh, bananas are cheap here. There's banana plantation around there. It look at like apple, apple that you eat here. Even those living in um, shack in South Africa see apple and fruit as nothing. But in Nigeria, apple is cost. It's rich people that eat apple. I remember when we were young. <laughs> if my mother traveled to buy apple, he give us one one that day. After that, the rest become an idol. It's only for my father and my mother. See today, I apple is still like that. Day. I see that meat and fish and chicken is rampant there. KFC, KFC. If, if Nando's is too cost for you, or Chicken Licky is too cost for you, go to KFC. Or if KFC is too cost for you, go to town. You see them roasting it there. You can buy chicken for two rand and you eat five rand in Nigeria. If you have two meats in your food, you are big. I'm telling you. So if you come to a nation and you see a pleasure too much there, a spirit, a principality, the manufacturer principality is there. You see, I'm dropping what I'm, this way that I'm dropping, they are fire. I know what I'm doing, but you don't know. You are looking at me now. I'm dropping fire. I'm not rushing you. You see, I'm not staring you. I'm not shouting to the God. No, no, no. I'm not staring you today. I'm building you. For 40 days, 40 nights, was shouting, somebody must rise in this family or I will keep on tormenting them. Don't see a revival in a nation or what is going on in Nigeria and think uh, God just favor Nigeria and Nigeria just bringing men of God. No, there are people that have confronted principalities in Nigeria. Are you hearing me? Every nation have what they produce. We produce pastors, at least. If China is producing, you see, some people don't understand. They say, why they are teaching people how to produce this thing in China? Nigerians are teaching their children how to pray. Uh, no, everybody have what they produce. You see that? We'll see which one will last long. And it's not that we are not intelligent. We are very intelligent people. In Africa, we are intelligent. Very soon, if Jesus tarry, when all our politicians, all these old ones have gone, a new breed will come. Because before a new breed comes, it's revival first. If you ask why America all Western nations are developed. It was their revival took place first. Kachikuma, uh, John Knox, Charles Finley, Kenneth Egan, all of them came from there. Revival always precede the go ahead before development. So what Africa is doing now, why there's so much spiritual activities going on now, is a sweeping for development. You know, I'm looking at this congregation now. Look as if I'm teaching, I'm giving bakery to people that are looking for bread. That's what I'm seeing. You look as if you want bread, you don't want the bakery. The way, you are, <laughs> the way you are quiet looking at me. I'm giving bakery to people that just say, give me bread, I don't want bakery. For 40 days, you know what? Paul said in 1 Corinthians, let me round up. Some messages, you might not need it. Your children, children will see this message on the internet. They will use it. 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 32. So we are not preaching to only you. There's a generation that is coming. Paul said, if in the manner of men, if truly there was not a beast, that's what he's saying, I would have just been eating and drinking, enjoying myself as normal. I would have just lived my life normal. But there was something Paul went through pain in Ephesus because he was trying to get a revival. He was trying to teach the resurrection. He said, in the manner of men, I fought with beasts. Now, if you, this scripture properly explain himself. In Acts 19, Paul went to Ephesus and got that some few disciples. He stayed there for three years, teaching them. Acts 19, 7, see that? He said, now the men were about 12 in all. And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading them concerning the things of the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, it departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily. Reasoning when? In the school of Tyrannus. And he continued for two years, so that all who dwell in Asia, the whole of Asia, 
had the word of God. Both Jews and Greek. He, he labored for two years in that territory. A, a continent. In verse 11. Now God work unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. 18. And many who believed came confessing after two years laboring. Telling their deeds. Mm -hmm. Also many of those who had practiced Sangoma. That's what it means. Abalis. Magic. They brought their magic books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them. And it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. Which is 50 million dollars now or so. Or 500 million or so. Are you seeing that? 20. So the word of the Lord grew and multiplied, grew mightily and prevailed. This thing happened in Ephesus. But Paul told us in Corinthians that he fought in Ephesus men that are like beasts. For two years, he labored for this revival to break forth. Two years. Whether you want to believe what I'm telling you or not, if you don't fight now, your children will fight it. Somebody must rise to fight. When you start this journey I'm talking about, let's say you start for three months, you are still praying, Two months you are still going. A vision must come for direction. When, because sometimes God does not fight. God does not come into your family until he see you take the step. Yes. Are you hearing me? God can be quiet looking at you and your family. Because in Jeremiah 51, 50 or 51 from verse 20 said, You are my battle axe. Meaning I will not do anything if the axe is not ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeremiah 51, 20. You are my battle axe. And weapon of war. Although God is a mighty man of war, he cannot fight if his axe is not ready. Every warrior needs a weapon. You are God's weapon. Are you, are you hearing me? Oh, don't worry, after this message, you just keep it as a reserve. I will teach you other ones that will make you happy. But this one, keep it. You are my battle axe. As a preacher, I depend on my mic. If I don't get the mic, when the light was tripping off, I could not preach. I depend on the mic. As you that came, you need a seat. You are sitting now. When you go to your office, your work, Maybe you need your laptop. When you want praise, we need instruments. Without your laptop, you can't work. When you are sending your children to school, you buy book and pen for them. What's the essence of sending them to school when you don't give them pen and paper to write? So God is also saying, I can't do anything when you are not ready. Uh, I know you don't like what I'm telling you, but this is truth. You can't be comfortable sleeping in your house when it's winter and there's no heater. You need heater for every winter. When it's winter. When it's summer, you need air conditioner or fan. When it's time for war and changing the territory, God need a man. You are my battle axe. I wish this was not true. I don't know. I, I wish I could make it more easier for you just to make it. But for this cause, where are you born. And for this cause, that's why you came into this world. That's why you were created. That's why. For this cause. <laughs> when they asked Jesus, who are you? That's what Pilate was asking. Are you the king of the Jews? He said, for this cause was I born. For this cause came I into this world. That I should be a witness of the truth. For this cause were you born, and for this cause came you into this world, that you should dispossess the devil from every territory, every family, every life he has been occupying. You need to dispossess him. We need to dispossess him. And we will not rest until we dispossess him. You are my battle axe. Two things can happen to that battle axe. When Elijah, Elijah took his people to go and cut three, the battle axe fell under the water and sank. So some of us, the enemy have sunk us. We are sinking. Our faith have sunk. Our belief have sunk. Our prayer life have sunk. Our fasting life have sunk. So Elisha the prophet said, where fell at it? And the truth stick there and the axe began to float. Today, anywhere you have sunk, your business, your finance, your career, your prayer life, it will float today. Amen. And Solomon said, Another thing that can happen to the axe is that the axe can be dull. That means it's not sharpened. Said if the axe is dull, then you need to work harder. Ecclesiastes 10 10. If the axe is dull and the one and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. Wisdom. There are labor you labor in prayer, and God gives you a certain wisdom. So you discover that when the axe head is not sharp, ministry becomes hard. That's the meaning of that. If the asset is dull, then you have to use more strength. You use more strength to labor for money, more strength for ministry. Everything you are doing, look as if you need to struggle for it. If that's how your family is, today you will be free. If that's how your life was, today you will be delivered. In the name of Jesus. 
giant killers. Every giant that is hiding in your life, hiding in your family, hiding in your territory, that is killing, stealing, and destroying. Today, you shall destroy them. The Lord shall give you power stronger than them. You shall be stronger than your enemy. And you shall slay all this giant town. In the name of Jesus. So I'm sitting here with you now. God is giving you a possibility mentality. But that's what used to confront a, a, a giant. You must believe that you are able. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Say I'm able. I'm able. Uh -huh. God is the one that go ahead of you. It's not because you even prayed long. The praying long is you saying you are interested, oh Lord. That's what you are just saying. Then God will appear and say, okay, now that you are interested, let me tell you what to do. God is a God of tactics. I will teach that on that day. You see chess, chess game. You see to be a coach, that's how God think. The spiritual realm is chess game. The spiritual realm is coach. And nowadays soccer is not how to, boom, it's not that to now, it's tactical. And every fighter will tell you that styles make fight. Style. Style make fight. No strength. Style. The style you come with. So for example, this fighter can fight this fighter. And this one defeat this one. Then this one went to fight this one. This one beat this one. Then this one that this one defeated. This one that this one defeated. We beat this one. Because styles are different. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. That's the topic for another day. But let me shock you now. God wants to use you. Amen. Want 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 to use you. Amen. To fight in your family. <laughs> in Numbers 13 27, let me round up with that. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It flows with milk and honey and its fruits. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. These are giants. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Etites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanite dwell by the sea and along the bank of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people and Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are able to overcome it. But some of the men who had gone with him said, We are not able to go up against these people, for they are stronger than we. God is here to fight those battles for you. And all those powers that have been boasting against you, those giants that have been boasting against you, you shall bring them down. This teaching is a teaching of empowerment. And you will be having visions where you are dealing with principalities. You will deal with powers. You will deal with giants. You will slay them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Are we following? Yes, For David to fight his own giant, he said, he gave him five stone sling. When they were trying to give him an armor, he have not tested. He said, I have not tested this. So you must know the weapon God is telling you to use. You will have to find the weapon. Some of us, we like to worship a lot. Some like to pray. Some like fast. But look for your spiritual weapon that you have tested. If it's dance, you like going to, to dance always. Maybe you were dancing in the club before, but now you know you like, you like dancing. For a season, go into strong praise. Even the day you don't feel, dance. If your own is worship, take it. Take what you have tested. That's how you slay your giant. Some of us is giving. We like to give. Some of them is, some of us is sacrifice. We just like to sacrifice. Anything you know that is your weapon that you have tested, that you notice the day, that's how you know your weapon. Maybe sometimes you fast three days, you discover there was a change in your life. That's your weapon. Keep fasting. Extend it. God, yeah. God will always show you. God will always show you an approval to say, this is it. Sometimes you gave. The moment you give, money just start coming to you. That's your weapon. Don't stop. I'm telling you. Sometimes you discover that you prayed a certain time of prayer and you kept consistent. And after that prayer, something happened, changed you. Extend it. God is just, he's, he's not saying you should settle. He's just saying, this is it. This is it. Go with this. Go with this that might. That is your strength. Some of us, maybe we study the Bible for so long. The moment you study, you discover a lot of things change. That is your weapon. Are you hearing me? We don't all have same weapon. So Paul said, the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty true God. Our weapons are different. That's why David will use sling and stone. Moses used rod. Samson used a jawbone of an ass. And when you read it, once they use it, they don't use it again. They throw it away. Meaning, don't imitate me. Look for your own. Look for your own. And when you find your weapon, 
you don't use it emotionally. I told you, you use it devotionally. Meaning, even the day you don't feel like fasting, you fast. Even the day you don't feel like praying, you pray. Even the day you don't feel like giving, you will give. If you find it, even the day you don't feel like dancing, you dance. Because your flesh will want to stop you. You will have to, for you, when you break the protocols and the power of the flesh, you will break the powers in the heavenlies. I'm telling you, everything is in your flesh, in your body. Heaven, we are talking about, <laughs> is your body. So when you rebel in this, your body, against weakness, sleep, and the wine that that nation is used to control. Once you break the protocol of the flesh of that nation, you have break the powers in heavens, powers in the waters. The, the marine in my village connect with the marine in this country when I was here. And I've told you, some of us know this story. I said, they came to my house here. Yeah, the, the queen of the coast here yeah, came to my house 5 a.m. in the morning and took me under the water and gave me seats like this. And said, so we can help you to do ministry. You don't need to struggle. Just work with us. There are negotiations. When you, when you start this, what I'm saying, there will be negotiations going on. There will be spiritual negotiation. Now, when you find yourself in that place, you don't have power to say yes or no. It is what you fed your spirit with that respond when you are taking the... You know, consciously, if I say, uh, I'm a spiritualist, I'm a CCC, worship me, consciously you will say no. But when you enter the spiritual realm, it is not yes or no. It is who you have trained, disciplined your spirit to be that respond. So for me to even get angry from that seat and came back, say, no, I'm not work, working with you. I, I, when I woke up to my body, I said, ah, thank God I said no. It's not me. You don't have power to make conscious decisions there. Some people have become a witch. They don't know. They didn't consciously enter. So when I was training my spirit to avoid a lot of things, I was preparing it for that day of negotiation. A day of negotiation will come. You think it's only Jesus they negotiated with to, turn, uh, to, to bow before me, I'll give you everything. When you start dealing with these powers, they will bring you to a place of negotiation. When Israel wanted to leave Egypt, they negotiated with Moses. Please let only the children go. Please leave the children behind. Leave your cattle. The old people should go. And Moses said, no, everybody must go. When you enter this journey to save your family now, to save yourself, to save your or whatsoever God wants to use you to rescue. If you are not disciplined, that's why Daniel said he did not eat. He was fasting. He did not eat anything. That means he did not feed his flesh to all what the flesh wanted. That's why even Jesus, before the day of negotiation, he went for 40 days. The body had to be put under subjection. Because who will betide any man that the day of negotiation, you agree with the devil? There is always a day, you hear what I just said, of negotiation. The day of Samson's negotiation, it was Delilah. And he sold his birthright. The day of Esau's negotiation, it was food. And he sold it to his brother. The day of Joseph's negotiation was with Potiphar's wife. And he said, no. There will be everybody hearing me now. There will be a day of your negotiation. Spirits! When you meet this strong man I'm talking about, that have been holding people's goose, when you confront it, and you see that you came prepared, you start negotiating with you. Is it money you want? I will give you. That's what you, you say. Is it money you want? I will give you. Is it business you want? I will give you. Is it house you want? I will give you. Please don't take everybody away from me. Don't take everything away from me. Is it woman you want? I will give you. Is it fame you want? Whatever you want. I said, the Marine said to me, they've seen my future. They know where I was going. They saw how serious I was then. This was 2017, this thing happened. He said, we are ready to help you. You don't need to struggle. Just work with us. When God is saying you should put your body under subjection, it's not for his sake, it's for your sake. Before you will unintentionally go and make an agreement with the devil, unintentionally, may God help us. I will bless. Yeah. I told you last week that you should go and listen to the messages again. Don't just hear, yeah, yeah, no. Go back after year, relisting, replay, rehear yourself again. I know what I'm saying are not f my words. So I listen to myself again because there are tactics that God has given me for a battle. I know. So I listen to myself. It's the Holy Spirit that's talking. I listen again. My own word encourage me. What I teach, it still encourage me if I go and listen to it again. But you people that are too spiritual, you only listen once and you are so powerful. If you can understand what one message can do when you keep on listening and it become a part of you, <laughs> you'll be a warrior. Go on a spiritual journey. Put your body under subjection. Don't feed it with sleep. Don't feed it with those weakness. Know when they are sending things to you. I already know the family I came from. 
do you know where you are from? Flesh wise, I'm talking about flesh and blood wise, do you know where you are from? Do you know the history? Do you know the lineage? My grandmother, I have many children with many fathers. I know where I'm from. Our children are giving birth also like that with many fathers. Our children, I know where I'm from. These are giants. These are giants. Giants. Do you know where you are from? Have you developed beyond where you are from? Have you broken the weakness of where you are from? It is not cast out. It is wrestled with. As it will wrestle not against. It's not being cast out. You wrestle with it. They desire you. Notice when you go through long CCA prayer and fast, then they will present to you what you used to negotiate. You see, you, they, they can use a business, your job, to negotiate with you. You know, you, you need to go to work tomorrow. Don't pray. You know, you, they, they, they'll just use anything to distract you. I wish you were listening to what I'm saying, and I believe those this message is for, they are listening. My mother's father, grandfather, married also many wives, and this, he died early. They was killing, 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 killing in that family. I know where I'm from. Where are you from? In flesh and blood. In flesh and blood. I know your spirit is from God. You are from God. You little children, yeah, of God. But your blood, that's why Jesus has to come through the root of David because the blood, it comes from matters a lot. So he didn't have to marry because he knew that that lineage, it was women that was the problem. Don't enjoy the pleasure or what is more easier to assess in a land that is iniquity. Don't enjoy it. There's a prince, the manufacturer is there, and he's using it to hold everybody to ransom in that territory or in that family. God save us. God help us. Amen. God set us free. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because many people are looking at it like, hey. you don't like what you are hearing. When you stand up one night and shout, principality is fire, fire. Eh? They say, who, 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 who talk? <laughs> You've not dealt with your village. You don't even know where you are coming from. You are shouting principi, principi. Many years ago, when I was in Benin, in university there, when I shot fire, I, I, I was attacking territorial power. When I slept, all of them gathered me. They panic beat me. So that's why Elijah came, caught fire down. Whenever God wants to open revival in the nation to address principalities, he sent a prophet there to address it. So it's not easy for you. You have to be under the canopy of a prophet. Yes. You have to be under the sheet, the covering of a prophet to fight your way out. He said, Prophet Jeremiah came from Mountain of Fire. It was under the covering of Mountain of Fire. He got his own deliverance. Me, I got my deliverance from under the covering of his ministry. Because you need a covering to fight what I'm talking about now. Even the parts from your family, you need a covering. Because when you start this journey now, and you begin to fight, and they come after you, most times you will see you and the prophet going there. Or they are fighting you, the prophet will just appear. It's not me, it's the grace, the covering. <laughs> I want to give you per assignment, all of you. This teaching is not received. It is go and do. So I'm giving you assignment. Because these 30 days and nights I prayed, I don't know whether it's two months now, I've prayed, been praying for two midnights. There was a spiritual breaking I saw in the realm of the spirit yesterday. <laughs> so I'm giving all of you assignment. I need to get real intercessors from here. Prophet are sent to raise intercessors. So you go on a long journey spiritually and choose from 12 in the midnight to 4. Choose one hour in it. If it's 12, you want to wake up, it must be 12. If it's one, it must be one. So that means when you know you have an assignment in the night, you don't be on your phone and joking around when you are supposed to be sleeping. So you put your flesh under subjection. You know that you don't eat late because your flesh will go through. Anything you like, if you like beer, you have to put beer. If you like women, I'm telling you, okay, I love it. Whatever your flesh like, you must deprive it of it. I'm fortifying you for a journey. You will meet spirits. You will see spirits that existed in your family before you were born. When I traveled this journey, I'm telling you about, there was a night I, I was sleeping, I saw my forefathers, all of them were sitting around. Generations, like up to seven generations, we were all sitting like this. Ancestors, you think they are good people? They are not. We fought there. I said, listen, listen, I came here. <laughs> I've been hearing what you people have been doing. I see, I'm not part of this. 
If you don't go, they will say more. Choose one. Because <laughs> when you go, you talk what you want. When they say more, you, they tell you what they want. Are you hearing me? Yes. Either ways, you must be there. Some of us here, we are very rich. But these people, they don't want you to be rich. After this teacher you just had now, what you are going to notice is a lot of things will change for you now. It's a proof. <laughs> when you see it change, don't settle. It's a proof that true, true, what the prophet was saying is true. So I have struck the strong man of your father's house. <laughs> this is what you will notice. If you are not married yet, your else will be calling you back. They want you back. They don't know why they left. It, don't go back. It's just a sign. These are signs. Your old job, where you are, they, people that forgot to just watch this week what's going to happen, these seven days. Some of them don't agree. Some is promotion, some is a test. So you must know the one that is a promotion or a test. But this week, just watch from now to next Friday, you will see what I'm saying. Now you will know, when you see this week, you will know that you should continue or you should just allow things to just... You see, nothing just flow this earth like that. If you don't move something, it will not move. I'm praying for you. This week, the power to conquer giants, may it come upon you. The grace and the covering to challenge, to defeat, to bury, to conquer that giant that is submitting you and your family. Receive the grace today. Receive the grace today. Receive the power. You shall slay the giant. You shall kill the giant. In the name of Jesus, the Lord shall go before you, empower you, dispossess the giant. And all your goods will be released. Your family goods will be released. In the name of Jesus. 